Everybody does this like all the time and pretty much everybody does it wrong. So today in this video, we're gonna talk about how to batch parts in a way that is useful to you and reliable in manufacturing. So batching, batching is when you take a whole bunch of parts, either the same or different, and group them out on the print bed of a 3D printer. There's a number of different reasons that people do batching. The number one reason is really just to get print time back rather than having six two hour prints that you have to restart over and over again and then don't run through the night. Instead, you put all the prints onto a single bed and it is an easy way to make a full set of parts. So that is the reason people batch. Uh, closer to home with Slant 3D, people batch in order to get a, a better deal on 3D printing inside of apps like our Teleport app. The Teleport app is a, a service that we have where people can upload models and connect to like their Etsy store or their Amazon store. And then when you get an order, we will print the item and ship it to your customer for you. So you get access to our giant print farm. Now, people do that in order to get a cheaper access on Teleport. I recommend going over to the Slant Pod video here to find out more about how that might be changing in the near future. But those are the reasons for batching. Just get more print time out of your machine or get a cheaper deal from a print on demand service. But there are a couple of problems with batching that are quite substantial and things you want to address. Most people just lay parts out on a blank bed and start them printing. This is stupidly dangerous because if one single part of that batch fails, all of them go with it. Because if the part like comes unstuck or shifts or has an overhang or causes some debris, then it knocks into the next part, which then fails, which knocks into the next part, then, then fails. And then you end up with this giant mess of spaghetti. So batching is very dangerous to use, even though it has the benefits kind of an efficiency of print usage, it loses many of those benefits from error rates and failures that can cascade through an entire batch. Another danger with batches, especially with print services, is that print services generally visually verify parts and all they have is the 3D model to compare against the batch of parts. If you throw in a batch with like a few dozen or a few hundred parts on the print bed and they pop off the print bed into a giant pile, it is almost impossible to verify those parts in an economical way. So the batch will become very expensive or you will have the danger of parts missing because you have 10 or 12 big giant parts and then you have a bunch of sneaky little ones spread around inside of there so that when somebody looks at the 3D model, they don't see the little sneaky tiny model. And inversely, if it's done with a computer that can see all the models Models, all the items inside of the 3D model, but then it looks at the pile, it can't see that the tiny little part is missing. So quality control and inspection of parts with batches is very, very difficult. So you generally don't wanna do it for services. And again, we talk about this more in the context of Teleport over on the POD channel. So there's the risk for you, but if you are still wanting to do a batch, there's a few reasons to do it. Number one, you get a full set. So if you are having a part printed and you're like, oh, well, I have this little gadget that has three pieces in it, I would rather just put them all on the same bed so that all three pieces are finished out at once. They can go into a bag and a full set can be delivered to the customer. I get that, that makes good sense. So let's go about how to do batching well. In order to do batches well, we actually have a solution already from the injection molding industry. You remember if you've ever built small plane kits, how you get kind of a card full of all the pieces of the plane kit and then you snip them out of there and you put the plane together? That webbing of support material is something you can apply inside of 3D printing. Only 3D printing has an even better option, which is not unusual because printing is better than injection molding in almost every way for creating products. Instead of using those sets of sprues, which have to be snipped off and leave burrs on the parts, we are gonna use a raft. Now, if you're familiar with 3D printing, a raft is generally used for bed adhesion. It's a way of sticking the part down to the bed without having the part contact the bed. But rafts actually have several other benefits. And one of the biggest ones is not adhesion, but actually organization. Remember earlier when I said, if you put 100 parts on the bed, they all pop off the bed and then you just have a pile of parts? Well, what if instead you just had those parts pop off as one single piece? This is the value of the raft. If you just inside of your design or inside of your group of models, you pull them into a tool like 3D Builder, line them out on the bed how you want them, and then just design a single plate underneath them. Now you have a card that will contain all of your pieces reliably. And in fact, that card is more reliable than the print bed because the card will never be contaminated. You never have to worry about adhesion problems. And it's much lower probability that a single part will failure from getting knocked over because it can physically stick to that card. 
So instead of just having the parts loose on the bed, you have them contained on the bed. Now let's go ahead and go through the design of that card really in detail, that design of that raft. Again, like I say, you group all your parts and you have them together as a single STL. Or if you're designing them straight in CAD yourself, you go ahead and lay them out in the pattern however you want. Ideally, you would still design those parts well, so you would fill at the edges and follow all the rules we talk about on this channel, chamfering the bottom, so on and so forth, because those are all rules that are still very relevant in this situation, because you want these parts to pop off from the raft reliably. So watch all of our videos about design of first layer. They all still apply. But you design the parts well, and then you put the raft underneath it. The ideal spacing is a minimum of 0.2 millimeters, but you can go up to 0.3, and I recommend just testing this out. 0.3 is a safer kind of direction to go to if they're allowed to pop off loosely and you don't want a really tight first layer. 0.2 is fine, but you do have the danger of them having sticking very rigidly to the raft. The raft itself is one millimeter thick. That way you know that it's a fully solid plastic part and doesn't have like hollowness in it and you don't have to deal with like roofing and that kind of silliness when stuff is printed. In addition to this, the thing that people will generally screw up with the raft is they will make it a perfect square. If you make it a perfect square underneath all of your parts, make sure to round the edges. Otherwise you have a first layer adhesion problem where the raft can peel up if you're using high warp materials like matte black PLA or PET G or any other sorts of materials that you happen to be using that can peel up and warp and have bed adhesion issues. So round the corners, or even better yet, you can just put a circle underneath your group of parts and put them grouped on that circle. Now, there's a few other benefits that you can also get with this raft. Now that you have all your parts grouped on there, yes, you can take advantage of pricing if you want to, but you also have a nice controlled set to where parts can be auto ejected more readily if you have a set of two or three pieces, but you can also use that raft as a tag. Many people want to add cards in for items when they're using print on demand and that kind of stuff, but you can't print those sorts of items on paper, but you can print them on the printer. So you can use the raft as like a labeler to put in like a QR code or maybe some text or a thank you for the order engraved onto the raft and the raft serves as that tag and then all your parts are piled on top of it. If you wanna be really fancy about this, you could design a raft that has outlines for each one of the models on top of it so that if one is missing, there's an empty gap sitting there like a little circle saying, hey, there was supposed to be a cylinder here, where'd it go? You can also use the raft to number your parts. It's actually a nifty kind of way to use 3D printing to create a really nifty customer experience that otherwise wouldn't exist. And the great benefit of this also is that the raft coming off as one unit just makes it very easy to realize, ah, the whole one unit is there, all the pieces are on there, we know what was available, that's a good situation. So the raft is not simply a way to organize your pieces, but it creates better processes all the way down the line so that you can actually mass produce this part or print it on demand, and you know that parts will be produced reliably, consistently, and to your spec, and you're able to reliably upload them and know that one piece won't get lost or fall off or get forgotten or just be in a pile of bags delivered to your customers. This is just a better way of doing batching which almost nobody uses. Everybody, since they're on their home 3D printer, they just upload a whole bunch of files all lined out on the bed and then say, print them all somehow, regardless of how complex that first layer is or anything else. Batching is a bad thing to do natively, but if you can batch them up on top of a raft, now you have something that is really, really useful, really, really robust, and can radically improve the product that you're producing. Have a great day, everybody.